Boston has been transformed by immigration. It's not just the mass of East European shops. It's not just the local agriculture and food processing industries who thrive on workers supplied by local employment agencies. It's Boston itself. And it's a change that divides opinion. I think the community has lost its Lincolnshireness. It should be, again, a good story for Boston, because in fact there's much more work here. We've had to create extra school places, we've had to expand schools, and we've had to build new schools and open free schools. Let's take a step back, though, and look at the national picture. Total EU immigration was running at about 100,000 people a year until 2004, when it rose as a group of Eastern European countries joined the EU. Annual EU immigration is now a bit under 300,000 people a year. Now, EU immigration is less than half of total immigration, which is over 600,000, but it drove the medium-term rise. Remember, people leave too. Net immigration is about half of those totals. Now, some of those East Europeans come here temporarily, living in cramped housing and saving up. Then they go home again. So what do academics make of these flows? Well, they're usually quite positive. Well, we have done a study which now dates back some years. We were looking at the period between 1997 and 2005. And over that period, uh, what we found was that immigration uh, held back wages at the very low end of the wage distribution. Uh, on the other hand, that impact was very, very small. Uh, it did increase wages further up the distribution and on average the impact of migration on wages was actually positive. From the evidence uh, we have from a study which dates back a little bit further, we find basically very little evidence that immigration has done anything uh, in terms of increasing unemployment. Boston's experience of EU migration is very extreme. Here in the town, at the 2011 census, they found that around 13% of the local population came from elsewhere in the EU. And what that means is that all of those migration effects are really dialed up to extreme levels. For example, we know that migrants have powered big changes to the local economy. We know that better off people have done even better. But there has also been a squeeze on lower income people, and it's come in the form of their living standards, not unemployment. This Labour councillor says changes to the local economy have been very pronounced. Historically, we grew the vegetables. People came from outside of Boston to pick it. There's always been more work than could be done by local people. So you would have people arriving in white vans at you know, four in the morning, or before that you'd have itinerant Irish workers coming here. So there's always been a need for extra work. But in those days, the vegetables were picked, the workers went home at four o'clock and the vegetables left Boston with them. But what's happened now is there's much more processing of food going on. And in truth, lots of vegetables are actually being brought in from Europe to be processed here. And also technology has extended the farming season. So really now harvesting takes place for 10 months of the year. Immigration has also had a big demographic side effect. Walking around Boston, one thing's quite clear. It's actually quite a young town, even when you take account of the fact that we're here on the week of the May Fair, so it's not quite normal. That's not that surprising, though. When you look at who immigrants are, one of the very striking things about them is they're very young. So, for example, here is a graph showing the age distribution of Poles currently living in the UK. It was taken through the Annual Population Survey, a big government research project. And what you can see is there's a huge swell of them in their early 30s. In fact, if you take people who are the same age as me, 33, across the whole of the UK, a full 5% of them were actually born in Poland. This local UKIP councillor says that an influx of young people has created some particular issues. Unfortunately, now we're in the situation whereby we have a lot of young men, and this brings its own problems. Alcohol, of course, uh, causes many, many problems, and it means they do disrespectful things in public where maybe they shouldn't. And then likewise, it means there's fighting and such problems associated with alcohol. Immigration has had other effects as well. Well, the main effects have been it's driven down wages, 
we have some of the lowest wages in the country. We're always in the bottom five. The average wage for an adult working full-time is only just over £20,000 a year. I must admit that's before the new living wage, so that's last year's figures, but it won't be much higher. Um, and rents are some of the highest in the East Midlands. You've got in Nottingham about £480 a month to rent a house. In Boston, it's 560 on average. There's also a local problem with family homes being used to house large numbers of single people. The less scrupulous landlord, you can get a three-bedroom house, change the living room and the dining room into bedrooms. Nothing in law stops you doing that. Two people in each room, ten persons in the house, £60 each a week, £600 a week rent coming in, £2,400 a month. And that's you know, more than the average family earns in a month. So there's no way an average family whether they were born in Boston or come here as a family from Europe, can afford that sort of rent. So how many different languages have we got? We've got English, we've got one Polish, we've got two Portuguese. Left to their own devices, young people often make even younger people. In 2014, 11% of children born in the UK had at least one parent born elsewhere in the EU. The figure for where both parents are EU migrants is over 5% whose parents were not born in England if they were born in another country. Okay. This head teacher runs a chain of local schools with a large East European contingent. In the secondary sector, 36% uh, are of Eastern European uh, community. Uh, in one of our other primaries, it's 42%. In another primary, it's uh, 52% and here in this primary it's 65% but if you go into the nursery 73% of children are not English. This was really difficult to make. What do we think it might be? More children obviously need more school places and that demand wave in Boston will soon hit secondaries. Lots of these children also get public money for specialist language support. Fortunately, we do get additional funding for children who, are, who arrive in this country uh, not speaking English. A child that's not been in the country for three years, we would attract an additional £1,000 per child. In our trust, that equates to around £375,000 a year additional funding. Now with that, we can appoint specialist staff who can support these children. Now, EU immigrants as a group are unusual in a way you might not expect from the type of work that they do. So immigrants to this country, and in particular from Europe, are actually very well educated. They are better educated than the average UK uh, worker. Um, however, that doesn't mean that they necessarily work from the very start of their migration history in highly skilled jobs. Uh, they very often downgrade, we call it downgrading, they work in jobs which are below uh, their observed levels of education because they need some skills uh, which are complementary to their education, such as, for instance, language skills. And they acquire these skills uh, and then they very quickly upgrade uh, to those jobs which are more in line with the education they bring with them. Well, this is the Latin uh, traditional game in Latvia and uh, called Nous. And this is the game we call it Latvia. Indeed, lots of those who lack English skills have particular trouble. This local Latvian community leader has been trying to stop them from being exploited. It'd be better to stop people coming in who don't speak English. It's better for them and it's a bit safer for us as well, who is living in this country quite a long time. Because the, uh, two years ago, opened the doors for new two countries and uh, these people come two years ago, now they actually working for less than minimum wage. Some of the people working for 350 per hour, what is illegal. And this is, a, again, exploitation is just going on. We are here 10 years now, you know, open the doors for Lithuania, Latvian, Poland. And we've been exploited when we come here. And now it's starting again. Local authorities can act on some problems. Boston is doing something. We've managed to get two grants from the government to run a road landlord project. The first one went for a year. We inspected over 240 properties and issued over 280 enforcement notices, so some properties had more than one fault. Four of the properties, I understand it, were actually not allowed to be occupied anymore, and we actually found some properties where people were being forced to live in wooden sheds. Oh, we nearly have lost. 
Others, though, think we should call time on our EU membership. I feel that our country is becoming overwhelmed. We're only a small island, although I do believe we're a good people. But I do think we need very seriously to have our borders back under our own control. There's a hard question for the Leave campaign to answer, though. Would immigration actually be lower post-Brexit? Now, it's certainly the case that if we were to leave the European Union, we'd have an opportunity to recast our immigration policy. What we can't say, though, is what that immigration policy would actually be. So, for example, it's quite plausible that a future British government would cut a trade deal with the EU to get market access to that big market. And part of the price of that would be much the same migration conditions as we have right now. Few other towns or their annual fairs have been so rejuvenated by new arrivals. Few enjoy such low unemployment, but few also face such congestion or pressure on living standards. Most places aren't Boston, so the effects of migration are more nuanced and much harder to spot.